Okay, hello, Irv. Today is February 25th, 2017, and we're at Stacy's house, and we're going to do a group interview. Who, Stacy? Do you have a question for Irv? Um, I think Steffi had one first, right? Okay, Steffi. What was one of the most mischievous things that you did as a child? The mischievous things you did as a child. Mischievous. Like, were you ever arrested? Why do you assume that I did something mischievous? Well, every kid does something mischievous. Oh. And you had five boys, so I would imagine you did. Well, when I was a little baby, there were only two older brothers. How about <clears throat> the time when you um, ate a snake? No. I never ate a snake. Uh. Oh, yeah, that was... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was when I was like two and a half years old, and I was across the street from our house on Florida Avenue, and my dad came out of the house running because I was eating not a snake, but a worm. Yeah, so gross. <laughs> Didn't you do something with a car? I don't think yeah. it was very good. Huh? Wasn't there some... You were driving and you jumped in the back seat of the car while you were driving? I did that with my brother Harry because he was too mouthy. That was much later. Well, tell us what you did. I was driving in this car and my brother Harry was complaining about my driving. So I opened the door, stood on the bumper, and jumped in the back of the, uh, of the car and, was and walked around. Well, my brother had to grab the wheel, and he slid over, and then I went in the other side. Oh, my God. Nothing more was done about it. Okay. Oh, my God. That, okay. that was a long time ago. That was 90 years ago. Okay, Stacy, do you have a question? <laughs> I, have, you, I have one. <clears throat> were you scared when you went to the war? I know everyone, you, everybody did it, but, but in truth, were you actually scared? That you no, didn't? no, I never had any fear. <clears throat> and it wasn't like that. The first year that I was in the military, I was in class and training. Yeah, but you knew you were going to a war zone. It, you weren't at, at I, I never had any, any, I don't think any of us really did, had any fear. You know, <clears throat> when we finally got over seas, that was another story. Yeah, so were you scared and, then? Well, we, we were concerned because we'd get up real early in the morning, you know, to start our flights. It was dark and everything. And we were concerned. <clears throat> but I other than that, I, I, I didn't really feel any physical fear. Okay, Ross, did you have a question? Yeah, what was your favorite food at home? My favorite what food? When you were living with your parents and your brothers. Favorite food. Grandma was quite a good cook. Pardon? Grandma was a pretty good cook. You know, it wasn't like that. Whatever she served, we there ate. Was, I know you ate, yeah, but there were things that I you don't, loved. I don't remember anything, mm -hmm. anything specifically. Was there something about pacha? Can you tell well, us about pacha? Pacha. What is it? Tell us what it is. And it's disgusting. But there were things that Grandma made that you loved. My, well, that was real special, the cha. And what it was, it was feet of a cow's feet cut into little hunks and in the lower part of the leg. And then we would cook it until it was done. How long was that? Uh, it could be hours and hours and hours. And uh, it was real, real, real garlicky and stuff. And then my mom would pour it into big oval plates and it would, it would uh, congeal and, and... Like a jello? It, just like jello, except it had this Delicious garlicky taste. I haven't had it for many years. My brother Milton used to come over and, 
he'd make it later on. My mom made it every so often, and that, to me, was a delicacy. To most people, it was probably garbage. <laughs> it has I thought hard it was, boiled eggs. Well, yeah, that's part of the way you make it. It had the hunks of um, the hunks of meat all over the place, and it was real, real garlicky, and it was on this huge plate. It was covered with sliced. Hard boiled eggs would float on top. And then you'd cut it into into squares, maybe an inch and a half yeah. to two inches. And I, I believe square. it's illegal in seven states. <laughs> Yair, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. In your lifetime, since 1922 until now, what do you feel are the biggest and most shocking change? Like, you know, there were cars. Before cars, after cars, before TVs, after TVs, Technology. before internet, after the internet. Biggest the biggest that for you was like, wow. Well, for one thing, when I was a little kid, we had, we had dealers with There were big <clears throat> trailers were being pulled by horses and they came by the streets and uh, some of them had different things on them. Some of them were collecting junk and they would, the guy was driving the, uh, <clears throat> the, what do you call it, uh, not a truck, it's a, a horse. Horse horse and carri wagon. Carriage, carriage. Yeah. You know, he would say, haul around different things. Is that how you got food through the carriage? No, well, um, we got our food. Was Milk was delivered to the house. Early on, when I was the youngest, it was done by milk, by uh, milk horse buggy. and buggy. Mm -hmm. And ice for the and refrigerator. And we had ice. We had a uh, ice box. No, we didn't have any refrigerator. The refrigerator didn't plug in? They didn't, no, they, didn't, they came much, much A big ago. block of ice they would deliver to the house? Pardon? A big block of ice? Yeah, 50 pounds, 75 and 100. How much whatever was that size you needed, they'd bring it to you. And in the winter, we didn't have to get ice because we had a, a metal container <coughs> that covered the the window, and you had the window would open and shut, and that would be cold, and that would keep the way we chilled things. Until I was a little older, and we finally, uh, my, my dad bought a refrigerator for us. So what was the biggest change? A radio, TV? Computer. Computer, what do you Cars. think changed the most? Cars, yeah. Well, Radio and television came, but they came gradually. Um, one of the big changes when we quit having <clears throat> to shovel coal into a furnace, we had a... You know, what, a oil? Well, we got a gas furnace. Gas yeah. furnace. But before it was coal? Very. Uh, Papa, what would you say is one of your biggest accomplishments in your life? Good question. Probably living this old, I don't think I ever had any particular great accomplishments. I made a living uh, all the time. And uh, how many houses do you think you built all together? If you had to guess, maybe seven or eight hundred. It's a whole city. No. We're not a big children. Can you uh, can you tell us about your the actions on D Day? When uh, D Day, can you tell us what you were doing that day and describe what happened? On D Day, what happened? We got awakened. D Day, we got awakened real early. And we went into this room, and everybody's real quiet. You know, the people running 
this meeting and all the pilots and you know all the flyers were in this room and the guy got up and said this is it this is the big day and then he just described what we had to do that day and everybody was really uh oh uh oh this like is going to be bad historic day yeah and what actually happened is we we <clears throat> did our mission came back to the base and instead of getting out and going and having some some coffee and some some cake and stuff we got in <clears throat> we gassed up and loaded up bombs again and took off again and <clears throat> we did that three times all together and the only sleep we got is the little bits of time we took off into the in the air and we weren't didn't have to do anything and that was that was scary times that was not scary of getting hurt it's just oh this is it uh -huh. that sort of thing. so you started at three in the morning what time did you finally finish that day oh we did we we went through the day and then the next night and then the day again and then another short mission so maybe a day, two days. So we only went two days. Non-stop. Without really sleeping, except for whatever time they could catch. Because there was a lot of time when we were flying, we didn't have to do anything. And the work that I did in navigation was easy. It was not hard. Keeping track of where you were. You had some some special mission where you were going to do like a suicide bomb with Joe Kennedy. <clears throat> tell yeah, us that story. Uh, that never came off. My pilot volunteered me to help him take a plane that was loaded as full as it could with bombs and take. We were supposed to take the plane get it up into the air, and the goal was to drop the, to fly the airplane right into the huge storage chamber that the Germans have somewhere around Paris. And what we're supposed to do is get the thing up in the air, fly it online to where we were right online to where the, the Germans were doing the storage, and then we were to, me and the pilot were supposed to, to jump out and another airplane was supposed to take over the control and fly it into the... How did the other airplane take over the control? Like radio. They have that radio thing? control. They have radio control. Another, another airplane can take over the first airplane? Sure. Mm -hmm. And what happened? What happened to that? That was, you know, was. What happened to that mission? Well, that particular that particular raid never went off because there was a crew right in front of us, and they were practicing right in front of us in time, and they were practicing what they had to do, and they took off and the, got the plane on track and they bailed out and one of the guys that was in the plane and bailed out was a well-known person and he got killed somehow with a, something went awry he got killed and they canceled all the missions anymore and, and that well-known person was who what who was that well-known person, person was uh, his name was Joe Kennedy, and he was the older brother of John uh, Kennedy, uh, President John Kennedy. Kennedy. Oh wow! And uh, he was supposed to be the sh the sharpest of the Kennedys. He was. He probably to be the sharpest. probably would have been president if he, he hadn't died. And, that was it. and you knew him? You were friends with him? Huh? You were friends with him? No, I never heard of him. I, you know, I didn't even know he had a brother. No, I didn't you know, know anything about the Kennedys. No, but did you know this Joe Ken? Huh? Would you know Joe? No. Oh. No, it was just that, that was in a base. You know, quite a ways we moved from where we were. <clears throat> Any other question? When you're flying in Europe, 
when you were working in Europe in the army in World War II, did you know at the same time of what's going on with the Jews, like the uh, Auschwitz and the other? Yes. Well, you knew already. Like it was facts that you heard. You guys heard. Yeah, that. not all the details, but definitely, and that caused something. <laughs> it caused a big discussion between me and Mama because I told the story of how when we were on a flight and we had plane trouble and couldn't keep up, so we turned off and we went a different direction to try to come back home to England and <clears throat> because we couldn't keep up. But we knew we had to drop the bombs to get rid of them. Because you couldn't land. Discussion. You couldn't land with the bomb. Huh? You couldn't land if you had bombs on the on the plane. Well, it happened a few times, yeah. And the wings would drop off a plane and stuff like that. It's just too heavy. But we, um, we were coming home on our own. You know, it's right straight across the shortest way we could find. And <clears throat> we were had to get rid of the extra load so we could hold altitude. And then there was a big discussion that went on between the four officers who were commanders. The pilot was the commander. We had a big discussion and the, some of them wanted to dump the plane, the bombs right away. And I was hollering and screaming, I didn't come over here just for fun to drop bombs. I come over here because I wanted to, I wanted to kill our enemy, you know, and years later mom said that was a narrow bad thing to do to kill all those innocent people. So we, tell us what you did. I, we dropped down a little village with a bunch of people. We took a side on them and dropped the bombs. And I don't know whatever happened to them, but it was not. You knew everything about everybody who was in, the, in your group, you know. <clears throat> Did you experience any anti-Semitism in your life? What? Did you experience any anti-Semitism in your lifetime? Sure. To you? Yeah. I'd fight a few times. <clears throat> Elaborate. Huh? Elaborate. Oh, I, I just tried to get into a fight. Someone would call me names and... Fist fight? Huh? A fist fight? A fist fight? Yeah. Tell us about the time you came up to visit uh, Alice, and you you had some accident or something. Your car you, accident from Bakersfield to to. Oh, that was after I came back from overseas, and what I wanted to do was I wanted to. Find a, a job, some sort, in the military, where I didn't have to go back to combat. Why? Because our mission, we had 35 missions, and at the end of 35 missions, you packed up and you went back to America, unless they sent you somewhere else. And the reason there were 35 missions, that was the average life of a bomber and its crew. So once you got the 35, you're home free. And so <clears throat> that was the deal. We went home, and I didn't want to get sent back to another uh, theater of war, like in the Pacific. So. You know, I went looking for a, another job, you know, so I didn't have to go fight again. And what I did is, it, is I, I was a pilot, as you know, and I signed up for, um, I was a, a, not a pilot, a navigator. I signed up and went into pilot training. And I got about halfway through, and the war was over. but. What happened is, when I was in the pilot training thing, uh, I had somehow been in touch with Mama somehow, because I used to write to her. And I had this accident, went to the hospital, and 
and our romance sort of grew after that. She came to visit you in the hospital. I think so, but I can't remember for sure. But somehow we did get together. And Mama had another boyfriend, a Jewish kid from uh, Clay, from uh, Akron, as she knew beforehand. But Named Joe Buddy. Well, yes, yeah, she had she had a romance with Buddy. Uh, Buddy Frank. Buddy Frank. But she also had the Joe something up in Cleveland, a real nice kid. But that didn't work out, and Mom and I got together. Anybody? Kids? Andrew? Think about anything from when he was little you want to know about? What? I'm asking Andrew, does he have a question? I want to have, how about someone under the age of 20 asking me a question. Joey or Emma, Emma. anything about anything from when they grew up, like no. when he wore, what kind of things did you study in school? How much money have you got in your partner? I don't what have any two dollar bills. Um, how old were you when you and Mama like, first met? Good question. When I first met? And how, Mama. And how did you uh, met? Mama was... 15, I think. I met her in a swimming pool at the YMCA in Youngstown. Um, I was 15 and I was like 18. Because we're about three years different in our age. You were 15? I mean, Mama was 15. And you were 18? I was, was that legal? I was three years <laughs> older than Mama. <laughs> was that legal? Was it? And you know, Mama was in nurses training in Youngstown and <clears throat> then her mama's family owned a theater, half owners of a theater, a real nice theater in Youngstown, really the nicest and uh, mama's father and his brother got in a disagreement to do you know, about how to run the business or something, so, so uh, Mama's father would, would let himself be bought out by his brother, and they moved to California, and Mama was in nursing training in Youngstown, so she signed up for nursing training in California, but about a month and a half before we got married, Mama quit nursing, and got a job in a, she went to work first, got a job working for a dentist. <clears throat> and then, and uh, dermatologist, I think. Huh? I think a dermatologist at some point. She went to work for a dermatologist. No, well, then Mama got a job working uh, for some different people and then decided to go back to school. But that didn't happen until <clears throat> I was complaining to my dad that I wasn't doing that well and I didn't really have a good job out here. So he said, why don't you come back here? He said, we can use you, you know, I'll, I'll teach you what to do. And <clears throat> we were, came back to Youngstown and moved in with my mom and dad in Youngstown. And that started our Youngstown career. What were you doing in California? What were you working? What were you doing where? We already yeah. talked about this. Yeah. On day. Let's not repeat you remember the, same the day video. I was at school. That's on the. You remember the day Rosie was born? And any memories of Rosie's birthday? Yeah, I was at the Southside Hospital. Nope. Wait a minute. Not Southside. St. Elizabeth. Yeah. Were you allowed in the room, or men weren't allowed in the room? Uh, no, I wasn't allowed in. I was outside waving at Mama, I know. I think I went in later and saw Ma Rosie. That's kind of hard to remember. I'm unforgettable. How could you forget her? <laughs> but, you know, we worked hard. You didn't know she was a girl, though, right? When they are born, you didn't know if it was no, a girl? No, not right away. And then 
her regular doctor wasn't there. Isn't that the one? I don't know. Some, I think it was a refrigerator repairman. <laughs> and then they hold her up. It's a girl! Yeah. Andrew, that was a good question. Anybody else have a Emma. question? Hey, Joey or Emma. I'm thinking of one. I am. I'm thinking of one. What would you have done had, had you not been, you know, a builder and a contractor? What would I have been? If, if you wouldn't have done it, then if you could start Well, I work. started out working in a, as a salesperson, selling uh, heating equipment and plumbing supplies. And I wasn't getting anywhere, and then I, uh, I looked into buying a business that took people out fishing. And that was, uh, didn't work out. In California? In California, and then as I said, I, my dad said, well, you, you, we can give you work here, you can make a living. So I came here, we moved into my mom and dad's house on Florida Avenue. And then we had our second child, I think. Tell me one story about your mother and one story about your father. A story about There's my something mother? Something that you remember about your mother and something about your father. A memorable incident. Well, my mother <clears throat> took care of the house, cooked, and so forth. Just a story, something you remember, something funny or something. Oh, well, that's your friend. That's his name. Oh, no, that's you. Oh. Okay. I don't. I can't. You had to, if you had to describe your mother in three words, how would you describe her? Was she talkative? Was she lively? Was she quiet? Was she... No, she was uh, a person who was, did not have a big education. My mom never went to school. I have no idea of how she managed to get from Russia to New York. Uh, nor do I have any idea of how my dad did that, but was, both of them did. Was your mom funny, like a good, a good sense of humor, or was she more strict, or kind? Well, she was more strict. She didn't have a real strong sense of humor. My dad had a better sense of humor than she did. Can you give um, an example of his humor? As I said, I don't know anything about how they came from Russia over here. Now, my, my mom... My mom and dad, neither one of them spoke any English at all. When they arrived. Uh-huh. When they arrived. When they came. Now, my dad and mom both came here in about the year uh, 1913 is when they came here. Uh, their firstborn child, my brother Milt, came in 1918. So they were here for five years uh, before Milt was born, and then I was born four years later. Yeah, but you were. I have no memory of anything when I was little, except in those first four or five years. That's where I learned. I must have learned Yiddish because my mom and dad spoke no English to, to speak of. And my mom's never learned to read or write, and uh, my dad did uh, on his own. My mom did not. Were, were they political at all? Were they apolitical? Political or apolitical. Well, one of the things that I remember is, <clears throat> this came a little bit later when the Depression hit, and my dad was talking about joining up with a socialist camp somewhere up in Minnesota, but he managed to hang on and not have to do that. So in, in the interim, my mom had five children. <clears throat> so, and then 
work was very, very, very difficult. You could, in the during the depression, you could find the finest craftsmen available for how much? Two dollars a day. That's twenty-five cents an hour. That was for the best. Other ones were cheaper than that, you know. And <clears throat> so you could talk for ages about what it was like for a family growing up during the Depression. I remember when I was a little bit older, maybe nine years old, something like that. My buddies were all going to the theater, and there was a theater about a mile from where we lived, where <clears throat> On Saturday afternoons, they had things where they put on a whole bunch of little cereal type things, you know. And <clears throat> my buddies were going to that, so I, I said, Ma, I want to go see the movies, and I, I don't have any money. And she, <clears throat> it cost three cents then to go to the movies for the whole afternoon. And my mother, I remember her saying to me, you can look wherever you want, you can kill me, you'll never find any money in this house. There isn't any. We're, we're just totally, totally penniless, you know. <clears throat> so what'd you eat? What did we eat? Were you ever hungry? Huh? Were you ever hungry? You or your brothers? Uh -uh. Somehow we had food. We had pacha, which was real cheap to make. <clears throat> and it lasts for a long time. And I still love it. Was your father a, a skillful uh, craftsman? My dad? Was he a skillful builder? Yeah, my dad was an absolute. He had his own top tools. Level. He had his own tools. and. His own what? Tools. Yeah, most of them were handmade. He made them. A lot of them. Well, yeah, you'd buy a saw blade and then just put a handle on it. Stuff like that. He was good at making and planing. Was the planing the wood? Well, yeah, there's some of you have seen the coffee table, which is my library table, they called it, which is my prized possession. My dad made it back <clears throat> somewhere after. <clears throat> Uh, 1913, and it was done totally by hand. I love that. There were no, everything, there were no power tools, no nothing. Mm. And it sits in the living room with a little sign that somebody attached to it telling you what it was. That's my prized possession in that whole house. I hope someone will end up keeping it and putting it in a revered place. Did your, dad have, did your dad have a bad temper? Or was he? No, my dad didn't. What, did he ever yell at you guys? Huh? Did he ever yell at you guys? Or did oh, he... I used to get beat up all the time. Did he, hit you? Did he smack yeah, you guys? Yeah, he'd get a belt and strap me and I'd run away and he'd grab me. And... But he didn't have a bad temper? Uh, no. Did, uh, who was the first president you ever voted for? <clears throat> Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 41. 40. What year was that? 1940. Oh, 1930. That'd be 1940. I have a question. Go ahead, Andrew. No, he was 18 no, in October. Not 18 oh, in October. I see. November is the election. Right. Yeah, Andrew has a question. Um, what was your like favorite thing to do when you were a kid when you were just like bored? I didn't hear you well, I'm sorry. What was your favorite thing to do when you were a kid when you were like bored? Good you question. Know, if you, you were bored, like now they play with video games, what did you do? For fun, what did you do for fun? What did we, well, I played with kids. We make, uh, we used to make stick ball or rubber guns. They used to shoot rubber bands, except real thick. We'd take a tire and cut it across and get a ring, and we'd use that. We'd have wars. We'd play hide and seek where there would be maybe 20 of us planned, spread out over an area of about one mile this way and probably close to two miles the other way. 
looking for people, you know, playing Ollie Ollie and Free was in there. So we had different games that we play, played. I still ask, do you remember your first girlfriend? No more? No, it's okay. It's him? going a little more. Does he remember his first girlfriend? None of very many. I, I went out a few times, but not a whole lot. And then when the, uh, I went away to school, and I, I dated somebody there, but I don't know who. And then uh, I went to school. Uh, after I left high school, I worked for a year <clears throat> all around until following September, and then I went into, I'd save up enough money to go to Ohio State, so I went down there, <clears throat> and I lasted there, let's see, June, July, August, September, September, October, maybe four or five months. And I had to go into the military. I either voted to go in or I got taken by uh, yeah. the system. Wasn't some of the work dangerous? Didn't you have a, some near close calls? <coughs> Something with the drilling or they were, and the court caught you and pulled you out? Oh my God, that was scary. <coughs> That was in the work I did before I went into the service. I worked as a pile driver. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into explanation what they are. That's where you drive huge, huge tubes, about 12 to 15 inches in diameter, and you drive them down into the dirt and to a certain density, and then you would pour concrete in them and. Like footers, right? Like a, like a foundation for a big building. Pardon? Like a foundation for a big building. Yeah, what you did is you built on top of the piers because the work of the would get down 50, 60, sometimes 100 feet till it was really rigid. But the one, there was one where there was an accident. And a huge pile driver up here came crashing down. If this is the one that, that you're talking about, and the, the, that had a a hose about five inches in diameter, and it was tied way up to that machine up in the air. Then it came down the ground, and I was sitting with it between my legs making the connection and uh, the operator of the of the big uh, crane that we're using screwed up and instead of the big pile driver going up higher to give us more room he dropped it down and the pile driver came rushing down the ground and it weighed probably four and a half ton, and it made a big loop like this as it came down. It's like you take a rope and you go like this and get a, a hump in it. You can make that hump go all the way to the down, to the bottom. Anyway, what happened was the, <clears throat> he gave the wrong signal and this thing came down and I was between the two big legs tying the ropes to do all this. And the, the hose came down in, in front of the pile driver and caught me and threw me from about here over to a little tree in the back corner. And I didn't know what hit me and it crashed down and pushed the piece of pipe that was under it, went down about six feet. And I didn't know what hit me except it was going like this. And you would have been killed if it hadn't been for that hose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You would have been part of a building. Yeah. But, so yeah, if it wasn't for that hose, none of us would be here. You go home and tell about it, but you don't, it doesn't have a long-term yeah. impact on you. Yeah, that happened. I, there, were, there were always some accidents going on there.
I think OSHA was probably a few years later. Huh? <laughs> what? OSHA was probably a few years later. <laughs> kids, anyone, any kids have any questions? Emma. Emma? I don't have a question. Okay. Joey? I have a was Ohio State men, uh, mainly men or women when you went there? Like, was there more men or were there also women? When I, when I went to Ohio State, as I recall, there were more men than women. There were women there because I dated, you know, when I was there. But <clears throat> I don't even, we, I must have been there about five or six months or so before. I got. I didn't want to get called up in the draft, so I selected going into the Air Force. Did you live in a dormitory? No. Uh, a good friend of mine and I lived in a house, and then we moved to another house. Then he moved away and I was there alone. And then I got the notice that I was being called up. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't remember when. How and that was, was it. How much was co then, the college cost? Now. Yeah. I have no idea. Your brother, so now but I'd saved up that. enough, you know, because I didn't have anything to spend, hmm? any Saving reason to spend mm -hmm. any money. I okay. said that they don't do that. You, you want, are you just stretching or do you want to be? She has a question. Mm -hmm. What, Emma? Um, what's advice that you want us to know? What advice would you tell these kids now? Which kids? The, the young kids. Your great grandchildren. Young kids, I think, you get the most possible out of your school and enjoy what you're doing and try to be the best students you can be and learn how to study and put it in as a top priority. That's what I've been doing. Education. Education is top priority. And it was with my mother and dad, too, <clears throat> who really yeah, had no education. As I said earlier, my dad had four years in a public school in Russia. My mother had zero years. And my dad told me that she never really learned to be... Um, she never really learned <clears throat> in all the years earlier. Um, Let's push her down. They were just, their condition was real bad. My mother lived in, in what was called a shtetl. A shtetl means a small settlement. And uh, my dad told me that he didn't think she even knew how to speak Russian because she lived in this village of, uh, called Shadrin, a uh, city, a little village of about. 3,000 people, most all Jewish, except a few people, so they could do things to help the Jews on Sabbath. And uh, so she, when she came to America, she didn't know any Russian to speak of. All she could speak was Yiddish, Yiddish which uh, I guess I'm the only one that can speak Yiddish here and I can carry on a simple conversation because, and I obviously learned it from my mother and dad because when they came here all they could speak was uh, Yiddish. Okay, let's hear a little Yiddish. Can you Pardon speak me? a little Yiddish so we can hear it? Say something in Yiddish. But wasn't there a, some song that your mother taught you? Is anybody that doesn't know that? Joey, I don't know if the kids know it. Emma, you don't know it at all? Emma knows it. What? All the kids know it. We're going to stop the interview there. Andrew? Joey? By yourself?
yourself? The little green. couch. Huh? The little couch. Oh, the green one. The big one in the TV room is really comfortable. We should bring that one upstairs. Everyone would be sitting down right now. Say it, someone said they saw a deer out there? <laughs> Are these all the plays 